you're a big stock market person, you're like, hey, I want to own $100,000 in Tesla stock. Well, you got to have $100,000 in the bank and you got to go out and purchase $100,000 of Tesla stock. So if it goes up 10% for you to get 10% gain, you got to own $100,000 of it. However, in a house, if you put zero money down, 5,000, 10,000, and you own that asset and it goes up 10% in value, you keep that 10%, even if you only paid a small amount. That's the super powerful part um, about real estate. You only need a little bit of money to control the whole asset. You get the whole benefit. It doesn't go to the bank. It doesn't go to the government for taxes. It goes to you as the homeowner. Hey, if you're looking to grow, scale, and automate your cash practice so you can have more time to do what you love, then this is the podcast for you. My name is Jack Mann, and welcome to the PT Cash Practice Industry Secret. Okay. All right, for real, for real. All right, here we go. All right, so so I didn't even introduce myself. I'm Tommy V from 81 Real Estate, <laughs> and uh, we do real estate investing for healthcare professionals. Our three tiers, our three buckets are going to be get more houses, maximum value, minimize time. So we kind of expounded upon that already. Uh, but uh, the I'm, me and my family, we're very family focused. I'm the oldest of six kids. And so literally my whole life, I've been teaching people how to do stuff, teach people how to walk, swim, ride a bike, play baseball, because I've always been an older brother and a pretty big age gap. My youngest sibling is 20 years younger than me. Mm. Uh, so so I'm 30 and my sister is just turned 11. So wow. I've had a, I've been basically being a teacher and instructor my whole life. Uh, and then in undergrad, I was actually a TA in in a program. And so I led a small group, 30 students uh, through a 16 week curriculum, uh, two times back to back years. And I loved it. I just have such a passion for teaching. And I think that's what drew me to the athletic training fields and then the physical therapy professions is I love I get so much joy from seeing other people win, seeing other people set a goal and then hit their goal like that. Like that is more satisfying to me than me hitting a goal. Um, and so my wife is a kindergarten teacher. And so she has those same core values, like teaching, leading, helping, instructing. Um, and so that's just, that's just how it was my whole life. Um, and then of course, as life would have it, things go crazy. Um, my dad got diagnosed with cancer in 2012 and unfortunately he passed away in 2013. Um, and that left my mom with six kids as a single mom and the baby was a year and a half. So pretty bad situation. Really, she didn't have the flexibility to go to work uh, because she had five kids still in the house. Um, so that obviously created a lot of pressure. Uh, luckily, my dad did have some risk protection. Uh, he did have some life insurance, not as much as he should have because most people don't. You don't think about, you think you're just going to be good and just rock and roll and be old and gray. And so a lot of people don't have, you know, risk protection. And that's something very important if you have, if you have, <laughs> if you're just a person, you probably should have it. If you for sure have kids, you definitely need to have some sort of insurance. Anyways, that's a whole separate thing. But so my dad did have life insurance. And so we were trying to figure out, okay, we have this chunk. How do we take this money? What do we do with it to make more money? How do we do asset classes? And I come from a family, my aunts, uncles, grandparents, cousins, no one is highly educated. Nobody has money. Nobody knows anything about investing, retirement, stocks, N no one. Me, I graduated from physical, I did undergrad and then physical therapy school. My sister's a nurse. The two of us, are the only two out of 24 of my cousins to graduate college. Like we do not come from a family that understands assets and investments and long-term wealth. Like those were completely foreign. Uh, just to put it in perspective, my dad was 41 when he passed and his 401k had $25,000. Mm. Wow. That's not that's not going to do the trick when you're right. old. Right. And so we just didn't know what to do. So we started just, so I started just grinding like crazy, looking at every single possible asset of, okay, what are stocks? What are bonds? What, what's a Roth IRA? For? Like just going crazy. And I came across real estate and it just kind of made the most sense to me. Um, my parents had accidentally become landlords uh, during the housing market crash in the Great Recession, 2009. And so they kept it as a rental property from 2009, and we still have it in our portfolio today. So we kind of already had one rental property, just kind of in the background. We didn't really know what to do with it. It just kind of got the money, paid the loan, just like let it you know, simmer. And so as we learned more about real estate, we said, you know, we know about things you can go touch and feel. You can't touch stocks because they're virtual. So um, at that point, that, I mean, now I have a better understanding, but back then we were like, I don't even know what a stock is and, and dividends and what is this? We we're like, all right, a house, you can go touch a house. 
and we know hard work. Uh, my grandpa and dad were both um, very, very talented craftsmen, DIY guys. So I said, hey, we can, you know, paint walls and pull out carpet. And okay, this seems like kind of, okay, this kind of makes sense. Um, so in 2017 is when we really started hitting uh, real estate investing hard. And we signed up for a six month mentoring course doing flipping houses. And there was not really any leverage, um, especially 2017. There wasn't a lot of automations and systems and all that stuff. So it was very like, manual heavy like you're the project manager and you're gonna spend 40 hours a week flipping houses mm. i was like wait a second i don't know if this is quite what i'm trying to sign up for here i'm trying to go to pt school um and so that's where we kind of pit, we're kind of biased towards doing rental properties because it was a little bit less of a time commitment and we're playing we're playing the long game we're trying to look on the 5 10 20 year horizon playing the long game capture all that appreciation uh over time so two eight well it's this is june 2023 to date we've done one wholesale deal that was our most profitable deal. We made 40000 um in like three months. That was awesome. We did no work. Um, and then we've done eight full renovations all the way down to the studs and concrete. One of them was off-grade house. There's holes in the floor and holes in the roof. So that was kind of a, that was a big project. Um, and then we've kept five of them as long-term rental properties. And so uh, since then, I went to PT school, came out of PT school. And then, like I said, I joined uh, Brandon Smith's coaching program. And he said, Tommy, you got to take all this knowledge and experience and go help some people like don't keep it to yourself that's selfish <laughs> and so he just really challenged me to start to brainstorm through all these different things like how do i take my experience and connect it with an audience to really help them and then just meet the master greg todd that's just a master of connection and empathy and identifying with your audience and really trying to serve and help them um integrated with his core values of family and faith and i was like all right it's go time and so that's what i'm trying to do just all the things we've talked about trying to figure out how to how to help people that have yeah no no net worth no cash flow no access tons of student loans and how do we kind of start the path start the journey gotcha that that's that's awesome man um just and i'm sure that's the very condensed version <laughs> <laughs> awesome. yeah that was let's say yeah. I'm, uh, sorry that even felt long i was trying to go uh, move, move quickly we but, just started um, my business um, I know nothing about real estate. I want to learn from you. Like, what would your first three step that I should do? Like a mini course that I should do? Like if I'm a PT watching this right now. Yeah. So if you're a PT right now that has even a slight inkling in the world of real estate, because it is a gigantic world, uh, the first thing you got to do is taking a page out of um, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits Highly Effective People. Number one, begin with the end in mind. You got to start at the end of what your goals of your life, of your kind of vision for you. If you have a spouse and a family, what does your family vision look like? And then you got to work backwards from there because that looks different for everybody. If your goal is to have a giant yacht and be in the Cayman Islands and traveling over to Europe, you know, every weekend, that's gonna be a very different strategy and plan than someone that says, hey, I want to own a cash based clinic. I want to treat one or two days a week. And I want to spend time with my family and go to all my kids' baseball games. So there's very different things, very different looks to how it can look for you. Now, I love this video. A recent video, my wife sent it to me from uh, Gary Vee. And he says, I know people that make $47,000 a year, and they're the happiest people around. They do what they want. They work when they want. They save up, go on vacations, and they're thrilled. that, that they're, You don't have to have this strict dollar amount on happiness you got to set like what are your goals what do you truly want and then work backwards that would kind of be step one uh and then step two would be uh rich dad poor dad uh just really under getting a grasp and understanding on assets what is an asset how does an asset help make me money now how do i leverage that to make me more money later and so just really framing your mindset of like how do assets work how do they help me like how do i pay less taxes all those kinds of things and then step three is you got to find real people in real life that are actually doing real estate. So you don't want to go on the YouTube clickbait people and the crash bros and all these, you know, that everything's on fire and terrible. You got to stay off the regular news networks. That's not going to be helpful to anyone. Um, and so connecting with an online community, that's what I'm trying to build out is going to be our online community dialed into healthcare professionals specifically. They're all um, early in their journey or not yet uh, started on the real estate journey. And then the real life is real estate is very regional. 
it is highly, highly diverse depending on what state and what city you are in the country. So you got to find your local real estate investors association and go there and meet and network with people. That those would kind of be my first three actionable steps. Um, they haven't. They either just started yeah. their businesses or they're still working on patient or um, impatient for some of them. A lot of my colleagues actually. And so let's say loans are right around the corner. Um, they're about to be in debt, right? Let's let's make a hypothetical situation because I want I want the audience, those audience members, one. Um, I mean, it's better for you because I want you to have a connection with the audience as well. But like, let's just say they have a high 600 or low 700 credit scores. So they did their homework. So they got their credit score up. They paid off um, the cards that they put on debt. And uh, they're they're in a somewhat good place. Yeah, and that, that already is pretty hard to do. I just myself yeah. got to a pretty good score um, after just paying off. Good a job, lot of my debt. man. There you go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, it's tough. It's, uh, it's tough for a lot of people because they, they wait or, or if anything, they're like, you know, it's fine. It's just like I'm borrowing. But then the, that interest rate eats you up, especially after you get past that one year of uh, 0% APR. But, um, I, you know, exactly what I'm talking about. Right. So let's say uh, I'm at that high 600, low 700. I'm just coming out of PT school. I'm starting my outpatient job, um, but loans are on the way. So what what is the outcome here and what is the time frame uh, for these people so that they can see that it's possible because for them you know it might not be like oh i'm not i think when people think real estate and investment the word investment they think 15 10 15 years plus mm, yeah. so exactly far. exactly yeah. so far in the future yeah, yeah. so kind of so kind of what so kind of the strategy that literally every single person that i have talked to on a podcast that is in real estate now and they were or are currently in healthcare all of them come back to the term house hacking or the nomad lifestyle, but house hacking is kind of the buzzword right now. And all house hacking means is that you are buying a house to live in with the intent in the future to turn that into an investment property, to turn it into a rental. So you kind of have, you're in either one of two places. You own zero houses or you live in a house now. And so if you're someone like that, um, the FHA is a national loan program, Federal Housing Administration. Uncle Sam wants to help you get a house because people that own houses are generally more stable, lower crime, they're generally higher earners, and it saves the government money, not trying to bail you out for stupid stuff. So they want to help you get a house. Uh, FHA loans, the, low, the lowest credit score is 590. Um, obviously, you want to be above that. Uh, the higher you are above that, then the less money you have to bring out of your own pocket to purchase a house. The amazing thing is that almost every state has uh, first-time home buyer incentive programs. So here in Florida, we actually have one since COVID that rolled out called the Hometown Heroes. I'm not 100%, but a good number of states across the country have something specific for healthcare, first responders, and teachers, like people that really got hammered during COVID. Um, and here in Florida, it's $25,000 towards your down payment or closing costs just for being a healthcare provider. And yes, PTs are included. <laughs> Some of these healthcare things, PTs are not included. They don't get invited to the party. But so if you're someone that has 690 credit score, you're working a W-2, you just got out of school or you did a cash base and you have a little bit of income coming in, you have a little bit of momentum, it's pretty easy to qualify for a loan even if you have student loan payments because you might be able to get into a house for zero money out of your own pocket, or maybe five to ten thousand uh, dollars. One of my buddies here in Jacksonville, he's not a healthcare professional, but on his FHA, he put down ten thousand dollars and was able to buy a three hundred thousand dollar house. Um, of course, every you know every situation is different, but I mean three and a half percent down. If you get a twenty five thousand dollar credit, if you could only have to pay three or four thousand dollars and to be able to buy a house, I mean that would be step one right there. Um, and of course, it would have to make sense that your payment would be less than rent. You know, there's some other, you know, variables there. But what's so powerful about real estate is that if you put zero dollars in down payment money, if you put ten thousand, twenty thousand, whatever the amount of money you put into buying that house, you control and you get a hundred percent of the benefit of that stock. house. So if you're a big stock market person, so for you're example, like, hey, I want to own a hundred thousand dollars in Tesla stock. Well, you got to have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. And you got to go out and purchase a hundred thousand dollars of Tesla stock. So if it goes up ten percent for you to get ten percent gain, you got to own a hundred thousand dollars of it. However, in a house, if you put zero money down 
5,000, 10,000, and you own that asset and it goes up 10% in value, you keep that 10%, even if you only paid a small amount. And so that's really the whole, that, that's the super powerful part um, about real estate. You only need a little bit of money to control the whole asset. You get the whole benefit. It doesn't go to the bank. It doesn't go to the government for taxes. It goes to you as the homeowner. So then am I right in saying you should be, <laughs> you shouldn't think about it. You should be taking the action. If you have the credit score for it, um, which I would say is the first step. But then the second step is you should be going into quote unquote house hacking, but really um, getting to your first asset class. Because it really sounds like the entry into it is very low barrier compared to. Yeah, think, it's 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 a lot lower than people think it is. Because exactly yeah. if you're thinking about, hey, I'm going to go out and I'm going to flip houses. I'm going to buy a house, fix the whole house, tear down all the walls, redo the kitchen and then sell it. Yeah, you need like a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of capital or access to hard money lenders. Yeah, that's like that's way beyond where most people are. But really just buying your first house to live in. And when you're kind of going through that analysis, like, is this a good house that I should consider getting? If you filter it through the lens of, hey, in one to five years, I may consider turning this into a rental, then you want to do those calculations on the front end. What would it rent for? Is this somewhere where people would want to rent? Um, kind of thinking about some of those some of those questions you want to ask those on the front end. Um, so then in a year or two, if you were to move out and go get another house or move out and go do travel therapy or move out and you, you know, got a job somewhere else, you could then turn that house into a rental behind you. And if the rent was more than the mortgage, of course, there's other expenses there, but for simple conversation, if the rent is more than the mortgage, that difference in cash flow, that'll help you qualify for loan number two. And you can do that again and again and again. You can get 10 loans in your personal name. And if you're smart about it, all these assets are, I mean, if we're looking at how the market's going, right? Especially in New York, right? Things are just going up every single year. And I think this is what I'm hearing from like, I, I follow a little bit of grant, but this is what I hear from that side of the real estate game is that they're like, you know, you need to buy now because it's just going to go up. And as far as I can tell, um, within the small amount of research that I have, it does really seem like, hey, yeah, it's high now. It seemed like we had a spike and it's a little better now. I don't think it's just going to keep going down. It's just going to, if the last 20 years is any proof, <laughs> it's going to keep going up. So I think if yeah. there's any time to take advantage of um, your your real estate asset, whether it's multiplex, multifamily, uh, single family home, and it's going up in value, even by 5%, and you have you over the next five years, you rolled over into 10 of these and you're renting them out. Um, you could still be at the same level of your business. So this is what's shocking to me now that I'm hearing this, right? You could be a out of school PT, even PTA actually, um, like myself, yeah. and uh, be making, you know, maybe somewhere around that, a little more than six figures in cash flow and from your business. But if you're really smart on the real estate side, your cash flow from the real estate over the next five or 10 years might double, triple what you're making in your business. And now you have a very, you have two very strong asset classes, the real estate side and also on the business asset. So I think this is very important. And I, I'm sure Chaplin will agree yeah. with me in a second here. Yeah, man. Um, when you start, when you start. So like, so the term for that, that real estate gets more expensive over time is called appreciation. That's the fancy word, but all it means is get more expensive over time. Historically, over the last 50 years in the whole US, it's about three to 5% per year. Every single city and state has its own rate. So like my hometown is Jacksonville, Florida. The historic appreciation there is 4.6%. So in some areas of the country, it's a little higher. Some it's a little lower. Obviously with COVID, things got all kind of, you know, things got all kind of crazy. Some markets went way, way, way up and they came way, way, way down, like Phoenix, Las Vegas, um, Seattle, all of those markets got really inflated and we won't go into it, but there was real reasons why they got so crazy, but they went up really high and they came down, but that's not the case in the whole country. Um, in Jacksonville, we, the market has not gone down. It has continually gone up every single year. Um, but yeah, the, the, the term for that is appreciation. Yeah. And so if you say, okay, 4% year over year, over year, over year, over year. Over year I mean that 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 adds up really quick. You you get two houses right. and both of them are going up four percent every year. That's a lot of money very fast. 
Right. And then there is ways to pull that money too. Um, and, and with the refinancing and stuff, I know there's a lot more complexity that you can add to, to really maximize or optimize the value of assets. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think for at least the basic, you know, healthcare professional audience to start early seems to be the most yeah, important time. Yeah. The number one compounder in any investment and especially real estate is time. Time is the ultimate crock pot. <laughs> So you want to cram as much stuff into there as quick as possible and then just lock it in and just let it, let it marinate, let it cook and just it gets better and better every single year. Awesome. So, okay. Um, and before, and, and I, I want to get to a point where, you know, I can let people have a, have a way to connect with you as well. Cause I think you're an invaluable resource. Uh, we don't like dentists have their own, obviously you've probably seen the billion like dentist uh, investment real estate investment groups on Facebook. I they come across my feed all the time. Um, but, you know, other than... Yeah, den dentists are balling. I don't know. I don't know if they need quite as... I think their problems <laughs> are going to be different than kind of the, the rehab <laughs> nurses. Right. A slowly grunt regular healthcare people, huh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it makes me think too, right? Uh, and that leads to my next question about leverage. And leveraging greater amounts of or leverage in, in terms of like the amount of power that you're able to elicit uh, through multiple healthcare practitioners. So let's say, for example, you know, yeah, I'm going out, getting my FHA, um, FHA loan and I'm doing my own thing, got my, got my house and, I, and I'm rolling over to the next and next and, and so on and so forth. But uh, if I were somebody that were thinking, okay, but like what if I wanted to get into something more commercial, and at like a million, million dollar, multi-million dollar um, plus commercial buildings and really, really working um, the money because the same amount of percentage at a much higher magnitude, that's more income for a lot of people. Exactly, might be yeah, 4% 4 4 gain. Well, really, usually real estate is way over double digits. So let's say 12%. Would you rather have 12% gain on a $100,000 house or 12% gain on a million dollar apartment complex? Exactly. Right. So then that kind of leads to my thought, you know, what, is there an in or let's say you have 20 different, uh, like cash pay physical therapists or MPs for people who are even just working six figure jobs. And cause I would say that's kind of like the minimum to just have some kind of, uh, investable money, but really their investable money is kind of at that 10, 20 K mark. That's probably around exactly. the amount that they're saving. But if you're able to pull that together, then they'd be able to have a down payment. 20 of them times 10,000. Now they have a down payment for something that's a million plus. So what do you think about that? Is that something attainable? Yeah, Should man. You're, mm -hmm. you're tapping into the like, you're tapping into the, like the big boy stuff. Yeah. So that's going to be kind of one of my, once we get the community going, we kind of get the core going and that's kind of like working up the pyramid. Exactly. So how can we pull our resources? So the, the real estate term for that is a syndication. The fancy mm -hmm. legal term is a syndication. And that's exactly what it is. It's kind of like saying, okay, there's a hundred shares, a hundred shares, a ah. <laughs> hundred shares of this apartment complex. And then, yeah, everybody's buying a percentage of the apartment complex based on how much capital you have available. And then the gains, you just split it all back out to the shares. Um, and so that would kind of be all my big, bold, uh, my big, bold goals and aspirations would, yes, be a healthcare professionals, real estate investing syndication where we can put all of our money together um, and maybe even be, be the bank. Cause there's kind of a certain point where you have a certain amount of cash to where you, or equity positions where you can get a loan from the bank. So you can either have cash or equity, but then you can lend that out to other people that want to be full-time investors. Mm -hmm. So kind of one, so kind of one, so obviously Gosh, I didn't even get to our story, but we've, uh, I did a six month mentoring course. Sorry, we'll circle it back and I'll run that through. Sure, sure. <laughs> so we, so I have a lot of experience flipping houses, doing bona fide cash on the front end, cash renovation, selling it on the back end. And so that's kind of one thing that I'm toying with as a solutions based offer would be, Hey, if someone's really interested in flipping houses or something more cash heavy, it takes a lot more time and a lot more cash, but some people might have that. If I did a specific course where um, everybody, where basically my community was my bank 
to where I would get a loan from each participant and thoroughly document and walk everyone through the process and then give people their money back plus interest um, to help them get a taste of like, what does it mean to be the bank? Because when you're the bank, you have a lot less risk, a lot less headache, a lot less to do, but it's still secured by a real asset. Um, and so, yes, that is something that is kind of on my on my radar. Um, but I think kind of starting at the bottom of the pyramid, with there's so many people that are in a lot of a lot of struggle, and they just need some some illumination. They need some hope and some light and a direction of like, okay, if I'm at least moving this way, even if it's slowly, I'm moving in the right direction. And so that's mm-hmm. kind of what we're trying to do first, and then kind of those bigger like, okay, how can we pull the money together? How can we do syndications? How can we help people offset taxes with big depreciation because they're participating in the syndication? Like there's there's definitely definitely a lot more things there's definitely a lot of options so trying to trying to knock it shiny object syndrome and get overwhelming Mm -hmm. to the audience and like confusing my message um so that's kind of where we're at anyway all right right, i'll recap (laughs) go ahead i just want to mention for the for the for the audience you know what i really wanted to kind of let the message be is that like there was a path from zero which is what is the most significantly uh a mental constraint for most people that don't get into investments at all, any type of asset. I mean, really, if you're doing your own business, it's an asset class. But if you're not getting into like real estate exactly. or stock or what have you, it is that lack of information. So therefore, making a jump from zero to one is incredibly difficult. Because oh my gosh, people- yeah. Go- yeah. Going from zero to one is probably this. And then going from <laughs> like one to two to 10 is like this. Yeah, I would totally, I totally agree. For most people I talk to, they'll say a year and a half, two years, three years, four years before they go from zero to one. Yeah. And so trying to shorten that up a bit. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So if everyone's listening, um, you know, please, please uh, hit up Tom, Thomas and and uh, ask some questions on this. But also just know that, uh, hey, if there is a pathway. I mean, shoot, like I'm sitting here thinking about it as he's talking. I'm like, hmm, how can I apply this immediately? Uh, but, <laughs> exactly. You know, the time is the one thing that is incredibly consistent that we can depend on that's going to keep moving. And it's not going to slow down at all. Time moves at the same pace that it's going to move. So we might as well leverage it and make the most out of it and start as early as possible. And hopefully the conversation so far that we're having with Tom serves as proof of that. Uh, and then don't be scared that you don't be, have to be a millionaire to invest. Um, exactly, there's a lot of exactly. ways to get into it. Yes. All right. Awesome. Oh, so let's, let's circle back to the, to the story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're back. Yeah. So, so just like summarize, it's so like my, my three main, like, hit points that are going to be applicable to any stage of kind of my pyramid, different avatars, people at different points along the journey is going to be get more homes, maximum value, minimize time. Mm. So how do we figure out how do we get more houses? How do we go from zero to one? How do we go from one to two, two to five? How do we get more houses? So that's going to be kind of one focus point. Two is going to be max the value. So if you get a shit house and you work on it and you make it better, then it's going to be worth more. So you max the value right there. Or like you're saying, if you have a duplex and one side you live in and the other side you rent out to travel nurses, boom, you just max the value. If you have a house you live in and you're going to move out and rent it behind you, there you go. You just max the value. So that's going to be kind of circle number two. And then circle number three is going to be minimize time. Minimize time from knowledge to action there. And then once you are managing assets, if you are being a landlord, if you are doing Airbnb or media, whatever, whatever you choose to do, how do you minimize how much time it's taking you per month. So how do we leverage technology, automations, real life property managers or online pl- property management portals? Like how do we how do we leverage time? And then how do we minimize t- how do we leverage time into our assets with all those compounding things that we're talking about? Um and so how do, how do we say, well I don't want to retire in t- 25 years and all these houses are paid off. Like how can I condense some of those gains to help Help so me get there quick. I wanted so to have, have an opportunity for you to kind of like benefit. show or so tell people kind of that are three, interested. So like, let's say among our audience, there are people who fit within that avatar. Every you're just client, starting out. But you don't know much about the investment, yeah. but you want to learn more. Because if you watch through this podcast up until now, then you will now understand that you have to start early. So how would they get involved? How do they reach you? Uh, what's the best way? Yeah, man. So right so right now, my, ma- my long content platform is, of course, going to be YouTube. That's kind of where most real estate content because these things are complex and so you kind of need a little more time to unpack them trying to 
pack all this into like a 60 second little TikTok reel is very challenging. <laughs> so you kind of right. need a little bit uh, long form content. So kind of YouTube and Instagram are kind of my two main platforms right now. I'm eight one real estate, the word eight, the number one real estate is kind of the brand I'm going in right now. Um, again, connected with Greg, um, faith and family are important to me. And so uh, Romans eight one is a Bible verse says, therefore there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And um, the whole concept of condemnation is a legal term for real estate. That's where it originated. So what mm-hmm. happened is you have a terrible house that's falling apart. It's dangerous. It is unsafe. The condemnation means unfit for use. So you see this house is falling apart. It's got holes in the roof, holes in the floor. The city comes by and says, this is unsafe for use. Tear it down. And then we as investors, healthcare people, we always see potential. We're the eternal optimists that we can turn it around. We can write the ship. We can make it better. And so we buy those houses, we find those properties, we find those dangerous things, and we invest our time, our energy, our sweat, and we make it a safe, nice house for someone to make a home and raise the family. And so that kind of that transformation, that house transformation um, is what we like doing. And so that's where the name 8-1 Real Estate uh, came from. So it's the same name, YouTube and Instagram. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. 8-1 Real Estate. Yep. And so uh, you guys can reach out to me right now. Right now, immediately, I'm just booking one-on-one uh, strategy calls just to kind of get to know my audience, hear what things are important to you, what your hangups are, where you are on your real estate journey. So as we're designing these communities, designing the program, we can make sure to check all the boxes. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. I got a booking link with a cool automation that just like you guys, <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, just got that up and running like three weeks ago. Game changer. So I didn't have to Hey, when are you free? When are you free? How about this time? What about that time? Text it all out. It's great. I love it. Um, awesome. And then, like I said, hopefully by July 1st, we'll have the community fully up and live. Um, Going to line up some monthly guests, other professionals in the in the space, whether it be mortgage broker or uh, just a realtor, property management. We're going to line up some special guests exclusive for our community. And then hopefully by September, we'll have the um, kind of the core meat and potatoes. When you're ready to when you're ready to get to work, when you're ready to move to action, that's kind of gonna be uh what we're doing there. Hey, thank you so uh, much for listening to today's episode of the PT Cash Practice Industry Secret. Um, before I let you go, real quick, all right. Um, if you haven't already, make sure to share this out so more people can get access to the industry secret to grow and automate their cash practice. By the way, if you would like to work with us to take your digital marketing game to the next level and dominate your online presence. Uh, simply go to www.growth.one and schedule in your free strategy session. Looking forward to talk to you soon. I'm going to go get dinner now. <laughs>